Good morning. Welcome to Alchemical Connections. This is Chrissy McMahon. And today we're going to have the Muddy Muddy Mud Man speak on the Celestial Prophecy. And um, with no further ado, here's uh, Muddy. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, top of the morning to everyone, or top of the evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. And uh, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Yeah, Many good things to you and yours. It's good to be here. Thank you so much, and thank you for being here. Um, we kind of started chatting before, so uh, we can start anywhere you want. Um, there's some interesting insights into the auras, which is one of the aspects in the beginning of the celestial celestial prophecy. Celestine prophecy, I'm sorry. Well, the auras, I think, are part of the uh, pineal gland. Uh, basically, detox and helps you uh, see the auras. Uh, basically, I haven't eaten right and done too much here lately so uh, I don't see the auras except once in a while now but before I used to see them quite a bit um, uh, you get on to uh, eating your live fruits and veggies and uh, and staying away from the meats a little bit and uh, your ability uh, kind of increases uh, on that part there they, they say uh, take take your two fingers and point them right at each other and touch them and then start pulling apart slowly just a little bit and kind of wiggle your fingers around and you'll you, you can just about see the uh where it rearranges the light in between your fingers you pull them out there to about a half inch three quarters of an inch and you can still see like a little football shape in between there and that's the energy flowing between your fingers um you have to kind of look at it for a minute to start seeing it but i i think the the best uh, example of auras uh, for those that uh, don't naturally see them or, or haven't noticed them. So if you're traveling down a down the road at night, like on a highway, and they got the trees cut away uh, for the road, and you're looking at the trees on both sides, and from where you're at, uh, the silhouette of it all kind of looks like a funnel. Well, when you're looking at it, uh, you're looking at... Uh, the, the top edge of the trees, all on both sides, and it seems that, like there's light behind it. And you look at the brightness of the light, uh, you're actually looking at the aura of the trees. But if you look at uh, the brightness of the light, you say, oh, that's light behind it. So you change lanes, and you move over. But the thing is, the light moves with the trees. You're not also looking at, you're not all of a sudden looking at a spot of the sky that was just as bright as it was where it was before. You move back over and it all changes. So, um, if you haven't experienced that, uh, take a road, uh, take a nice little road trip at night and just look at, look at the edge of the trees going down the road. Uh, or if you find an old, old tree, uh, you know, two, three hundred year old tree, a big tree, you'll definitely see the aura on it. Um, and like I was saying, uh, some people, uh, most people you can see their auras. Some people you just can't. And sometimes it's just uh, the darker colors uh, that they put off. I'm kind of leery about that. And any of the darker shades of uh, the colors that you see on people are basically the negative of that same property. Uh, a nice bright blue teal, uh, teal uh, aura usually I mean that's a person that uh, giving it, uh, gives an awful lot. And the brighter it is, uh, my goodness. Uh, I had to, uh, I had to learn a little bit when I, uh, had a taxi cab company in Virginia. Uh, that's pretty much when I first, uh, started the taxi, uh, company and stuff. Or, uh, the taxi business. Uh, gosh, my first year, I disarmed three knives, two guns, lost three, uh, windshields, a back glass, left front fender, a grill, all over, uh, trying to pick up the people in the rough areas that I thought just might be an old lady trying to get somewhere, and I'll, I'll, I thought I was Superman back then. And oh my goodness, I disarmed three knives, two guns. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a rough year, my first year. But after that, uh, I got my ribs bruised. Found out I wasn't Superman. I figured, <laughs> well, I'm going to clientele. You know, forget the radio. Uh, that that's people I don't know. So I, I got me a cell phone. Went off on that, and then somebody introduced me to the. Uh, Celestine prophecies. Now, just like somebody that uh, is blind, their hearing and their facial vision and everything kind of peaks uh, to make up for the loss of sight. The things you need 
or anything you enjoy in life, you will excel at. That that's uh, that's why the classes in school that you enjoyed, you got A's at. Um, and the ones that you didn't, it was next to impossible to learn. But being in the taxi cab, you know, I, I kind of developed a few extra senses. Uh, after a while, I could tell uh, whether it was trouble before it got to my cab. Um, and shoot, uh, people come in the cab. After I started reading the Celestine Prophecies, I learned that it was all energy struggles. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I learned that it was all energy struggles. E equals MC squared. Therefore, we are beings made of energy. Because you can take away from the speed of light or you can take away from the mass and it still equals the same amount of power. It's kind of like uh, power or wattage equals voltage times current. You can have 120 volts and one amp and you still got 120 watts. If you got one volt and 120 amps, which takes a fat wire, you still have 120 watts. It's the same thing in energy, uh, the mass and the, the speed of the light. Or how much light, uh, I guess uh, when you take away from one, the other one goes up, you can still have the same amount. But it all basically translates and says that you can get rid of the light or the speed, you can get rid of the mass, but you can't get rid of the energy. You can only redistribute it, harvest it from one, change its form, and all that. But uh, you, you can't get rid of the energy. God created us in his image, eyes, nose, mouth ears, uh, hands, fingers, and all that stuff. Well, everybody knows that part. Well, what about mind, body, and spirit? Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Or uh, God is a great being of energy? Well, great energy. Well, created us in his image. We're beings of energy. And people just don't realize how much energy. The vein in a coffee cup or that little handle that's uh, glued to the side. There's more energy in that little vein than, uh, than it takes to uh, evaporate all the world's oceans. So how much energy do you think you got in your big bulky body? Uh, compared to the size of that coffee vein anyway. Um, I started uh, noticing about the, uh, the ego trips that people get on. Uh, let's just say uh, the first time somebody whooped your tail when you were a kid. Uh, you went crying home, whoa, 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 you know. Oh, you walked for 10, 15 minutes, all right, about 30 seconds before you got to the door to your house, and you're you're coming home to mom. Your volume got louder, and whoa, whoa, you know what? You didn't hurt no more. What hurt? The person stole your energy. Mm. And that's an energy struggle. So there's uh, intimidation. That's uh, interrogation. Aloof and poor me. The, uh, the intimidator, that's the one that beats your butt. <laughs> the interrogator, that's kind of like the one that uh, he says, oh, <laughs> you got your clothes at Walmart, didn't you? <laughs> or they're looking for information to sit there and tear you down with. Um, they're all negative. Then there's uh, the aloof. Uh, that's the person that acts like he's got something for you just to hold your attention. And he may not. He may have something for it, but he's going to string you along. Uh, he's just looking for that energy. Then there's the the poor me, kind of like bad luck Schlepperock on, uh, yeah, on, you know, on the Flintstones here. Woozy, woozy, wow, wow. He's, my hemorrhoid medicine isn't taking care of me very well. You know, <laughs> I mean, you, you could be sitting around the lunchroom, you know, cutting up, knowing that you're you're on the edge of getting in trouble because you're having a you know, you're spitting peas through your straw at each other and having a little mini food fight, busting a gut and tears coming in your eyes, your stomach sore from laughing so hard. And here comes this person to sit down, what you guys doing? You know, yeah, I got to go wash my dog, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got to go see my girlfriend. You don't have a girlfriend. I do now, Bubba. Uh, yeah, I got yeah, I got I got an appointment. To get away. Uh, is, yeah, I, I got to go take care of something that uh, uh, a recent uh, problem. Well, something, something I had planned from yesterday. Yeah, okay, I'll see you later. Bye. And you're left there trying to be nice to this guy. And you know what? Your stomach may be sore, and you're clearing the tears out of your eyes, and you just really don't feel like talking to this guy. The mood is gone. That man just sucked every bit of that energy from that group. He saw it, and he said, "Oh, I got to have it," but he doesn't know he's doing it. 
And that's most of the people out here. They don't know what ego trip that they're pulling on people. And if you sit there and you look at the examples, you start looking at people, you find out that they're combinations of the of the above. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out how much, if you spend two days doing that, you will understand. People get in the negative, they burn their energy out, and then they want yours. That's the big truth of it. And that's the thing that changed my life. And when I got to... Uh, then all of a sudden here I'm getting these these uh, drunks from the bar. They might have just got over a fight, man, and they might just be, you know, they 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 might be in a bad mood or something, or their maybe their wife went dancing with the with another guy and they're jealous and all that. They get in the cab, you know. I developed a knack for just making people laugh. I'd sit there and pull them. I said, "Hey, I'm gonna beat the living crap out of that guy." He said, "Yeah, man. We're gonna we're gonna string him up by the neck, and then we're gonna boil him in oil, and then we're gonna tie him on the train train track, and then let the train run over about four or five times. Then we're gonna boil him in oil again, and then we're gonna string him up by the neck again. That ought to do it." That's the dark ages, wasn't it? Yeah, and then <laughs> and then they look at you, you know, and, and, and usually. Nine times out of ten, I usually got them busting up laughing by then because I put a lot of energy into it. And my, my my fun thing was is to sit there and laugh and joke with them, change their mood, put them in a good mood. Mm. Guy, even a guy late for work, man, just t you know, tell them a joke or something, pull them around there, and you tell you what, when you change their mood, they tip real good. But uh, that that's not my that wasn't my object. My object was to just change their moods because you know if that guy goes into work. And he's a floor supervisor. And he goes in with a bad mood. He's going to be trying to sap everybody's energy around him. Absolutely. Yeah. And, he, you know, if he's late, well, they'll say, yeah, well, we'll fire you for being late. But, uh, you know, he might not. <laughs> it, 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 he's bound for a bad day. But you can give him a good day. One of the most important things I found was if people get in the negative and they burn their energy out and then they want yours, usually it's a habit. Some people don't want to have a good day. Now, you can change their day if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. Let them have a, let them have a bad day. I have a right to have a good day every day. <laughs> and I'm a manic depressive. I don't take no medicine. I don't care for the medicine. I don't like what it does to the body and the kidneys and all that stuff. Why take all that stupid? I laugh every day, pretty much all day. But, you know, I don't have the problem anymore. I just, uh, it just kind of walked away from me at that point. And, and the cool thing is, uh, when I start, when I got off the meat and stuff and started eating the veggies and all that kind of stuff, I got to seeing people's auras. Then I got to figuring them out. It's just like, um, they, they say the bartender is the psychologist, the, the A number one world's greatest psychologist. Well, maybe, but I tell you what, when I got them in my cab, I got them one on one. And they ain't going anywhere till I get to the other end. And, you know, the meter doesn't go any faster by time. It goes by the mileage when you're moving. So, yeah, if I needed just a little bit longer to get through to them, I'd slow down a little bit. <laughs> but, the, you know, even if somebody's having a bad day or a bad time and you're trying to chit sit there and change it, after a bit when you've done it so many times, uh, one of the things uh, a great source to look at is looking ahead at the result that they're fixing to see you know you, you, you kind of laugh about that uh i remember my wife i'd come in i said sorry baby i had to take a few more runs and he says oh I, i'm you know i got a kid here i'm, I'm pregnant blah 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 blah, 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 blah. and i said oh baby <laughs> she goes what i said look at those caterpillars what caterpillars? I said, your eyebrows. They're just moving up and down, roll around quick, and that fire in your eyes. Ooh, baby, you just sexy. Come here, give me a kiss. Get away from me. No, no, come here, come here. Will you go away, baby? Get over here. You know, and next thing, <laughs> before long, she, she'll turn around and she'll beat on my chest and say, I hate it when you do that. I can't stay mad at you. I said, but baby, ooh, ooh, you know, say that again. H hit me on the chest. No, yeah, that's it. That's the look I want. <laughs> you know? You ready to go out and eat? Let's go. You know. <laughs> and she forgets look. that you change her whole mood, and she's in a better mood. Yeah, Absolutely. You just, yeah, you just bring it all around her. She can't do nothing but laugh. She can't do nothing. It's just you know. Look, you just bring the energy home. If you bring your bad mood home, you're going to be trying. You know, two people in a bad mood having an argument and trying to suck off each other is basically. Uh, 
is basically uh, news. You know, an energy drain from both ends. Yep. It's not going to grow. So if you have marital problems, don't bring your bad stuff home. Bring your good stuff home. i got to take a quick break. I just got company. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of read through uh, some of the insights. So uh, I have uh, the Celestine Prophecy by James Renfield. It was a book by Warner Books in 1993, and it was outlined here on the web by Laura Bryanan. And I um, I put the link into the chat box. The first insight um is a reconsideration of the inherent mystery that surrounds our individual lives on this planet. We experience mysterious coincidences which show us that there is another side of life we have yet to discover some other process operating behind the scenes. A world transform transformation is taking place now because the numbers of individuals conscious of such coincidence is growing dramatically. And and, uh, in some, uh, some lines people call it synchronicities. Once we reach a critical mass of such individuals, the culture will begin to take these coincidental experiences seriously. And we will wonder in mass what mysterious process underlying human life on the planet. Um, I think this is probably right where we're at. A lot of people are, as they say, waking up. There's something going on. They can't put their finger on it. Um, I know for myself, I kind of focused on the negative of the politics and stuff like that and kind of eased in that way and then went to the spiritual path, uh, which I'm, I'm very uh, grateful that I was led that way and I, and I went that way. Um, cause some people kind of get stuck on the, the negativity as Mudman was uh, discussing. Uh, but it, you know, it's all in your perception and how you choose to spend your day. You, you know, you're totally welcome to all the misery you want or you can have as much joy as you want. And, and knowing that you have the power to create that in your life is a wonderful freeing experience. The second insight is um history is not just the evolution of technology it is the evolution of thought by understanding the reality of people who came before us what they felt and thought we can see why we 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 look at the world the way we do and what our contribution is toward further progress the world is about to identify a particular preoccupation that developed during the latter half of this millennium now that i guess this would have been written last the last hundred years, the 20th century, we're in the 21st. So um, the Middle Ages, the reality of this time was defined by the Christian church. The world the church described as real is above all spiritual. Life is defined as having one solitary purpose to win or lose salvation. Churchmen were there to interpret the scriptures and tell you whether you are in accordance with God or Satan. If you followed their advice, you were assured of rewarding afterlife. Every aspect of the medieval world is defined in otherworldly terms. All phenomena of life is defined either as the will of God or as the malice of of the devil. All people look for granted that the world operated solely by spiritual means. So that that was during the Middle Ages, they say about a thousand B.C., um, and if you read anything by, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. I just read, um, uh, Michael the Archangel by, uh, Rudolf Steiner. Um, he, he goes into detail, I think, in a lot of his lectures where he talks about the, uh, different, uh, periods of time where we, we were more in tune with nature. And as we come into the 21st century, we're so separated from nature that uh, it's difficult for us to even comprehend the world as they saw it at you know at 1000 BC. So then it goes on to uh, 14th, 15th century. The previous worldview begins to fall apart, and this is exactly what uh, Rudolf Steiner is saying: improprieties on the part of the churchmen cause rebellion. The men who define realities for centuries lose their credibility. Scientific discoveries prove that the realities about our world, as maintained by the church, were incorrect. All ideas about the world taken for granted now need new definitions. 
And then as we go into the modern age, growing democratic spirit and, and mass distress of papal and royal authority, definitions of the universe based on speculation or scriptural faith are no longer automatically accepted. To avoid some new groups stepping in to control reality as the churchmen did, a method of consensus building, scientific method, testing an idea about how the universe works, arriving afterward at some conclusion. Uh, and I think they've taken this even further. Consensus building is really good. I mean, if everybody agrees in it, and I think money is, is an example. <laughs> it's a construct that we all kind of believe in and, and we take for granted that it's real because everybody believes in it. But, um, as most of us know who, who are listening to Awake Radio, that money is a construct and it is based on our belief in it more than any value that it has monetarily. Um, so, and then it just goes on, uh, when scientific methods couldn't bring back a new picture of God and or mankind's purpose on the planet, the lack of certainty and meaning affected Western culture deeply. And the question of why we are alive and what is going on here spiritually was slowly pushed aside and repressed altogether as we probably focused more on conquering earth and using its resources to better our situation. So we, we really got away from nature, got materialistic. So, um, and, and if you read Rudolf Steiner, I mean, it, it's, it's really clear how he explains it. It's just amazing. We've forgotten that we still don't know what we're striving for, and it's time to wake up from this preoccupation and reconsider our original question. What's behind life on this planet? And why are we really here? So, um, Muddy's still not back, so I'll go into the third insight. The third insight is the new understanding of the physical world. Humans learn to perceive uh, what was formerly an invisible type of energy, and that's what he started talking about. Um, the basic stuff of the universe at its core is a kind of pure energy that is malleable to human intention and expectation in a way that defines our old mechanistic model of the universe as though our expectation itself causes our energy to flow out into the world and affect other energy systems. Human perception of this energy first begins with heightened sensitivity to beauty. The perception of beauty is a kind of barometer telling each of us how close we are to actually perceiving the energy. When someone strikes us as beautiful, it displays more presence and sharpness of shape and vividness of color. It stands out. It shines. It seems almost iridescent compared to the dullness of other objects less attractive. And then the next level of perception is to see energy fields hovering about everything. And, um, and then it goes into plants. I guess that's the easiest way to see them. And when you read the story, the Celestine Prophecy, it actually tells you basically what mud man was trying to explain you put your two fingers together you kind of blur your focus and then you can kind of uh you know get a a better view of of what you're trying to see so as you not touch your fingers but put them as close together as you can blur your focus and then slowly move your fingers apart you should be able to see um some kind of energy going around your your fingers and then as you do that out in nature, you can uh, start to see the ores blowing around the living trees and plants all around you. So that's, an, that's one way to start. So what it says here in this uh, description by um, Brianon, uh, plants which have the most direct conscious human attention are more potent and grow faster than plants which do not get conscious attentions. Plants grow in this way when ingested, increase the body's efficiency dramatically. Um, I just want to uh, put out there too, and I should add the link. Um, there's a book, gosh, I can't remember. Um, Anastasia, the Anastasia books. Um, I'm going to type it into my search and see what I come up um, because uh, I think I spelled it wrong <laughs> but um, there, there's these books and I, and I can't remember the name of them but um, they're written by a Russian uh, PhD 
who who found that uh, there was these uh, stories that were told by this Russian mystic, and uh, he talked about this this woman who was just amazing, and uh, she shared all this wonderful natural information with this gentleman, and he apparently wrote these uh, these books. And um, if anybody has access to um, Conscious Media Network uh, archives or is in Gaim TV, um, you can go on and, and, and look at Regina Meredith's archives. And, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name, but uh, I guess if you punched in Anastasia, um, I, I mean, I'm trying to do it, but I'm not getting it. Well, anyway, she told him that there's this process of, of working with plants and one of the really cool things that um that you can do with plants to to really get the most benefit from them is actually put the seeds in your mouth so that your dna your saliva gets imprinted on the seeds and when you plant them they actually grow and give the most uh, nutrients for your body and it's just an amazing story, and 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 it's kind of like the Celestine prophecy. It's told in a story format, and and you can kind of glean all this wonderful information. Uh, walking barefoot in the garden, your your body gives off because of the energy connection. Uh, letting the letting the plants know exactly what you need, and apparently this will grow through the plants. And when you eat them, when you ingest them. You will be getting just exactly what you need. And um, since I can't find that, I'll, when I find the link, I'll, I'll add that to the archive when I, when I do that. Um, two periods of the day most conductive to seeing energy fields are sunrise and sunset and how to begin. It says, touch the tips of your index fingers together with the sky in the background. Now, that's, that's pretty good. Separate the tips about one inch and look at the area directly between them. Take eyes out of focus a bit and move the tips closer than apart. Once humans learn to observe energy fields, our understanding of the physical universe will quickly transform. We will become conscious that certain localities radiate more energy than others. The highest radiation coming from old natural environments, especially forest. So yeah, in the in the book, as they go through the story, the narrator is a gentleman, and uh, he meets a woman who's an old friend, and she tells him about the Celestine prophecy. And then, for some reason, he decides he's going to go to Peru, and he's going to uh, search them out. So Muddy's back. So, um, so welcome back, Muddy. <laughs> I just went through the first three insights and, and re-discussed the uh, process of uh, looking at energy and plants and the importance of that and 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 some other books that I have read that kind of uh, correlate and follow with the same principles. So, um, so welcome back. Well, I can hear the joy in your voice that I was back. Uh, I can <laughs> see your smile right through this microphone. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, alone on the air is kind of uh, it's kind of a little distancing. Um, but anyway, I got my stuff done there. Um, to go where I was uh, where I was before, I said if people want to have a bad day, don't go ahead and let them. You got a right to have a good day. You always have a right to have a good day. Stop having bad days. Uh, bad day can start. It just seems like it's real hard to shake. It's kind of like getting behind in school. When you're ahead in school at the first of the year and you got everything and you're keeping up, and man, it's real easy, especially if you're reading ahead, you know, and then you go to class and it's all review and all the questions are answered as the teacher speaks. And then you just answer it and walk out. But if you get behind, it's like uh, it's like learning addition and subtraction and you didn't get there for multiplication that day. You start the next day for division. Now you're having a little bit of a problem. Then they want to go on to square roots. Oh, my goodness. That little bit that you don't know holds you back, and it's pretty much the same thing. But I had people call in, and uh, it was like, uh, man, if I, I've been waiting on a cab from Yellow for, for six hours. I'm late. I'm the supervisor. I need a 12-hour shift today. They're all over my back. Look, he says, I need a cab. 
I need, matter of fact, if I don't get a cab in 10 minutes, I'm going to come down there and kick your wazoo, blah, 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 blah. You know, you just say, okay, well, how are you going to do that when you can't get a cab, sir? <laughs> and they and they, they get speechless, yeah, and, and the man hung up. A few minutes later, he called back, I need a cab, blah, blah, blah. I said, you say, man, say he's going to whoop my butt, wring my neck, and, you know, break my head off and pee down my throat. Uh, well, yeah. I said, well, you going to treat my driver that way? Yeah. Uh, no. I said, okay. Uh, so that was about five, six minutes ago. I said, you still need a cab? He says, well, yeah, I need a cab. I said, all right. Well, there's one sitting out in front of your house. And you should just go out there and get in that cab. He says, no way. Looked out the window. Hey, there's a cab out there. I said, yeah, you better hang up and get in it. <laughs> and then I hung up, right? And it was me. So he got in the cab. Oh, he, he said he'd give the he'd give the driver 20 bucks, give me t- uh, 20 bucks. And so, you know, he got in the cab, he handed me 40 bucks. Said, 20 of that's yours, 20 of, 20 of that's for your dispatcher. And then the phone rang, and I said, All-American Taxi. And I saw the look on his face, and he shook his head, and he said, I deserved it. <laughs> so I got him to work, put him in a nice mood, and he said, man, I had the best. And when I picked him up after work, he said he had the best day that he had in awesome. a long time. Awesome. So he wasn't really in trouble. Basically, he had a good day. And actually, the man became one of our best customers. So, I mean, you, you don't have to get into an argument or an energy struggle with people and all that. So, I mean, it's, it's once you start realizing what's going on, it's, look, the man depleted his energy. He needs some energy. Give him some energy. Pick on him a little bit. You know, make them caterpillars move. Whatever, you know. Just <laughs> um. That that's my experience on all that. Um, I'll let you get back to where you were on there, and I'll try to catch up with you. How well, about? the fourth insight is eventually humans will see the universe as comprised of one dynamic energy, an energy that want that can sustain us and responds to our expectations. So, um, we have been disconnected from the larger source of energy. We have cut ourselves off, and so have felt weak, insecure, and lacking. In the face of this deficit, humans have always sought to increase our personal energy in the only manner we have known it by seeking to psychologically steal it from others, an unconscious competition that underlies all human conflicts in the world. Uh, When a person engages another in conversation, one of two things can happen. That person can come away feeling stronger or weaker. We prepare ourselves to say whatever we must in order to prevail in the conversation. Each of us seeks to find some way to control and thus remain on top of the encounter. If we are successful, if our viewpoint prevails, then rather than feel weak, we receive a psychological boost. When we control another human, we receive their energy. We fill up at others' expenses and the filling up is what motivates us. Most people are in a constant hunt for someone else's energy. And I think you spoke to that perfectly. And um you know explains it a lot a little bit clearer in the book, but I I think this is pretty much what it is. But I guess because I I'm looking at it through the rendition of all the insights and how they fit together. So when it goes into the fifth insight, humans must learn to gain energy from the universal source, not other humans. Food is the first way of gaining energy, but in order to totally absorb energy in food, the food must be appreciated and savored. And I, and I just, I didn't understand the importance of prayer, and you can call it whatever you want to, but praying over your food in the sense that you're grateful, in the sense that you appreciate the value of it and what you're gaining from it, maybe the sacrifice that had been made so that you could receive it i mean all these things are 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 really important so um then it goes on taste is a doorway you must uh, appreciate taste this is the reason for prayer before eating to make eating a holy experience so the energy from the food can enter your body um i, I if anybody saw the movie avatar and when they when they were hunting and they killed an animal or they inadvertently caused an animal's death. They um they went over and they 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 said a prayer or apologized or whatever it was and thanked the um the animals for their sacrifice. 
And I mean, it was probably the first time I had ever really seen anything like that. So um, maybe yeah, the Indians do that too. The Indians do that. They 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 pray to the animal as they as they they draw their arrow down, and uh, and then when they go over there and they're butchering it and they thank it for the meat and all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's living when when you're living closer to nature, you're, you're feeling all these things. And see, th those things kind of came natural to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've lost touch with that. We're so we live in such a mechanistic, material world that um, you know, we think the artificial is, is natural. We we have no concept of the beauty of nature and and that we are part of nature and that we're part of the whole universe that we're totally connected everything's one so this is so lost in this generation um and we get further and further away from that so books like the celestine prophecy you know help to remind us what our grandparents knew what their parents knew you know my sister and i were talking about health issues and um and medication is what one of the first things that you said when you came on that um we'd be more insistent to take a pill to pop a really genetically modified massive chemicals that have nothing to do with anything natural it doesn't come from any plant or animal source it's all a chemical process is put together and we're ingesting that into our body and assuming uh, through the process of faith, <laughs> that that's going to correct the problem. So, yeah, we're, we're really quite removed. After personal energy is increased through conscious eating, you become more sensitive to energy in all things, and then you learn to take this energy into yourself without eating. To be open to universal energy, you have to connect to use your sense of appreciation, as in seeing auras, but you take this one step further so that you get the sensation of being filled up. When you successfully appreciate something, you allow the love that underlines all to enter you. When you appreciate the beauty and uniqueness of things, you receive energy. When well, you that's a wonderful thing. You could sit and uh, you could sit down, just stay, you know, lean up against the tree. Like if you've got a tough time in your life, a real rough spot in your life, and you need to think, go out and find the biggest tree that you can find. Make sure you're not going to get a bunch of things crawling all over you. Just go sit under the tree. Sit under it um, and relax. Lean up against the tree and look at the tree and just start admiring the beauty. After a while, the beauty grows. And it, and, and it's what it is is you're connecting with the tree. You're, the tree is collecting energy. And here, here's a wonderful thing about the trees, and I, I want you to take your imagination. And believe me, I've had a, you know about 20-something or 20 or 30-something years of uh, basically living by this, uh, it, it's brought a lot of thinking into my head. I look at a tree in the fall. Turn that tree upside down. What does it look like? It looks like lightning. Ooh. All things resonate. They vibrate at a certain frequency. All right. We can understand in electricity, we understand that light charges repel. So the branches fan out. Unlike charges attract, so the energy is coming from the, from the cosmos down, or the uh, maybe the electrons are leaving the earth and heading out. But it all vibrates at a certain frequency. Thus, different uh, trees look different, internodial lengths and all that. But they all fan out, and some trees are just amazing. When the leaves all come across it, it's just a nice even. Look like somebody did a line drawing and decided to shade an area with lines. I mean, it's just, it looks like a static fuzz ball, and it is so even and round. I sit there and I even look at those, and um, and I, after a bit, I can see the energy on those. I haven't done it for a while, but if you sit under a tree when you got there, you will never have more clear thought in your life. Matter of fact, if you want to meditate or pray, man, go out and sit under a big tree. You'll find your favorite tree. And you'll also find out that the tree gets healthier. So it, it's a beneficial thing. Yes, though all the energy in the cosmos is connected. It's one. I think God planned it that way. And yeah, the, uh, look at those trees. Just sit there. And the more you look at it, the more you'll see it. And if you've not seen a horror before then, you probably will then. Uh, I'll let it back to you. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. that's beautiful. The, the, 
you you give a more uh, hands-on description of what this is trying to explain, and I think that's just a practical way of being able to to get the good energy that you're looking for. And I and I want to like bring it around the pineal gland too. So let me let me just finish this. It's kind of long. Uh, okay. This is the fifth uh, insight. When you successfully appreciate something, you allow the love that underlies all to enter you. When you appreciate the beauty and uniqueness of things, you receive energy. When you get to the level where you feel love, then you can send that energy back just by willing it so. Even though an alternate source of energy exists, we really can't say stay connected with it until we come to grips with a particular method that we as individuals use in our controlling and stop doing it. Because whenever we fail, we fall back into the habit, we get disconnected from source. This habit always unconscious at first, the key to letting it go is to bring it fully to your consciousness. This is done by seeing that our particular style of controlling others is one we learned in childhood to get attention, to get that energy moving our way. Our parents and siblings operated in a drama themselves trying to pull energy out of us as children. We had to have a strategy to win energy back. This style is something we repeat over and over again. It's called our unconscious control drama. Each person must interpret their family experience from a spiritual point of view and discover who they really are. Once we do this, we can go past these control dramas and see what is really happening. General control drama styles, everyone manipulates for energy either aggressively, directly forcing people to pay attention to them, or passively playing on people's sympathy or curiosity to gain attention. So then these are the four different types. There's the aloof. In order to gain an energy coming your way, you withdraw and look mysterious and secretive. You hope that somebody will be pulled into this drama and try to figure out what's going on with you. When someone does, you remain vague, focusing them to sh- uh, forcing them to struggle, dig, and try to discern your feelings. As they do so, they give you their full attention, and that sends their energy to you. The stronger you keep them interested, or the longer you keep them interested and mystified, the more energy you receive. Then the second one, there's four. The second one is in the interrogator sets up a drama of asking questions and probing into another person's world with a specific purpose of finding something wrong. Once they do, they criticize this aspect of the other's life. If this strategy succeeds, the person being criticized is pulled into the drama. They find themselves becoming self-conscious around the interrogator and paying attention to what the interrogator is doing and thinking about. So as not to do something wrong, the interrogator would notice. This psychic defense gives the interrogator the energy he desires, or she. Interrogators pull you off your own path and drain your energy because you judge yourself by what they might be thinking. The third, um, what is it, control drama is intimidator. Someone who threatens you, either verbally or physically, and I would imagine emotionally, you're forced for fear of something bad happening to you to pay attention to them. And so to give them your energy. Um, this is the most aggressive kind of drama. And then the fourth is the for me, which you did discuss earlier. Someone who tells you all about the horrible things already happened to them, implying perhaps that you are responsible and that if you refuse to help, these horrible things are going to continue. Someone who makes you feel guilty when you're in their presence, even though you know there's no reason to feel that way. Everything they say, to do put you in a place where you have to defend against the idea that you're not doing enough for them. I, I call this either the sociopath or the narcissistic. And you know, I was trying to figure out which one my family of origin, and it's all of them. It's every single one of them. So I, you know, I, I wanted to read it again just to get the insight. So maybe you want to explain. Um. Do you want to go into deeper detail? Because I, I, I'm more interested in how how we process this understanding. To well, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go with the intimidator. Okay. Uh, that's okay. that's kind of like that lawyer when he's got you on the stand. Well, so it, all of a sudden he 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 yeah he's relaxed. He's having fun. And, you know, basically, 
he's gaining energy because he knows he's making your mind work. And you're looking at details, and this and that in your head, and your mind's going on. You're the one burning off all this energy, and he's just absorbing it and having a ball with you. And he can pick you down, pick you down, pick you down. And, I mean, and, there, and you know, you, you've seen the, the drama queens out here sitting there. They do the same thing. Mm-hmm. They just they just look for every little detail, anything to find a little niche or if they can get a fingernail into your mind, they'll 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 leverage it in and try to get it in there a little bit farther, a little bit farther, and 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 they're just picking on you, you know. Yeah. I mean, um, and it's like the intimidator. I mean, here's that guy. He said he's gonna. He said, "I don't get a cab in ten minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna come down, and kick your blah blah blah, and you know." And so how are you going to do that when you can't get a cab, sir? You know, I, you don't have to play into their deals there. But uh, I knew the man would call back, and I knew I'd get a chance to straighten him out. My my goal is to, if I can change it, straighten it out, then I will. Here's what you have to look at. If you're having an argument with somebody, um, just kind of imagine yourself sitting off to the side watching the argument. So you sit there and you say, well, I, I see this one tugging at, at this one's oar, and I see, and, and 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 I'm tugging at this oar, and back and forth. In the meantime, the energy's getting weaker and weaker, because you're both in the negative. How is it going to grow? What is the solution? Common sense, by knowing those facts, would say, well, that person needs energy. It ain't, it got, you know, if, if somebody's getting a divorce, you're arguing about. Toothpicks, toilet paper, Q-tips, everything. And you know it ain't nothing to do with that at all. What it's about is how you make each other feel. The respect you give each other. Look, if you've had a bad day, it's time to go out and get some flowers, bring it home to the wife. And if when you walk in the door, she goes, oh, You have to beat this kid's butt. You're going you're gonna to have to talk to him. You don't know what kind of a day, blah, blah, blah. Just walk up, give her a hug, squeeze her good, hold her down. <laughs> tell her how beautiful she is. Tell her, tell her that fire in her eyes just makes her the beautiful, most beautiful woman in the world. You know what? And if you need the joy to do it, just think a bit, just like that lawyer did. Think ahead at the reaction. And I'll tell you what, that'll that'll liven you up, give you all sorts of energy, you know, just sitting there thinking about it. You laugh at it. It, it it's you'll learn how to generate from inside these moves and how to pass this energy on. That's your gift. And the thing is, if if they can't steal your energy, you still have it. So therefore, if you give it, you've got plenty. And then you know you did even better because you sat there and you raised the energy level up both of you and neither one of you are dropping it down. That energy inside you is infinite. God made it that way. Um, the words of your mouth. I mean, you got to understand the things that you say have a lot of bearing. Uh, let's go right off here. And, and there, there's a few peculiar words in the beginning of the Bible that uh, that will just make somebody think. In the beginning was the word. Hmm. Word. The word. Word. And. And the. You know. And the. And, um. My good. Uh. Well, you got to sit there and think about the energy was spoke. Uh. The the universe was spoken into existence. It's still growing at the speed of light today. What you say is what you get. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God. Well, maybe God is energy. Maybe this is what it is, but it's spoken energy. The things you speak make a lot of difference. These people say bad things. Well, that's a curse. People don't realize that all day long they have the ability to curse people, and they do. They devise. They tear down. They pull somebody's energy. And this it, it's an energy game. And when you start realizing it, looking at it, and seeing it in that light, you realize the damage that people do. You realize the damage that you do. Absolutely. And then you can also realize the good things that you can do. It's like that shout from the mountain, man. Absolutely. Shaziz, Shaziz <laughs> is a man full of love. And, and, and when you listen to him, the main thing is 
He's trying to tell the whole world, I love you. I don't want to kill your kids. You don't want to kill my kids. We don't want war. We don't want that. We want to join together and we want to be strong as one, having the love and blood. And then he starts escalating. He feels it. That's a man that I swear is true inside and out. Mm -hmm. And I love him for it. Um, I guess uh, we get off to the aloof. The aloof. Yeah, it's, uh, you know. Yeah, like you said there at the beginning when he was reading, it's sitting there, uh, it's talking about um, he, he kind of looks like something's wrong and hopes somebody notices. Mm -hmm. uh, every now and then uh, you want a little attention in school, so you walk like you with a limp for a day just to get some <laughs> attention. That's the aloof. Yeah. Uh, what, what's wrong with your leg? Uh, nothing. Later on in the day, hey, how come you're limping on this leg and not that leg? Well, that's the interrogator. And he's he, he's into your game too, and then uh you know, then there's the intimidators. Man, if you don't stop faking and sitting and trying to get attention, I won't bonk you on the head. And <laughs> and then you turn to the poor me, man. But it hurts, dude. It, it, yeah, right. That's why you got uh, a limp on the left leg in the morning, a limp on the right leg. So they all come together. You you'll notice these interclashes of these energy struggles. Um. And even amongst the friends, they want to call each other names, put each other down, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's kind of fun, but you're throwing the energy back and forth. When it's fun, it's building. When it's not, it's negative. Um, I guess I'll send it back at you on there. Yeah, um, I was going to take a little short break just for station identification, but I um, I was wondering if, if uh, Steve has that pod that you sent about... Um... Which is, uh, we can either play it now or play it at the end. Oh, that's a good letter, yes. Is it long? How long is it about? Oh, no, it's uh, just a minute or two. Okay. Um, all right, so Steve. What we'll... he post, it's what he posted yesterday. I decided to turn it into a promo for him because I just thought it was just worded so right. Perfect. And welcome back. Uh, this is Alchemical Connections with Chrissy McMahon, and we have Muddy Muddy Mudman speaking on the Celestine Prophecy. And we just went over, I think, uh, three of the four different drama styles, uh, aloof, interrogator, and the poor me. Um, the intimidator is kind of, uh, you know, basically self-evident, but, um, and He's a weird type. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna sit there and pick you down. Now, those are the people that, that, uh, that thrive on debate teams and stuff, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And um, and people use more than one drama in different circumstances, but most of us have one dominant control dra drama that we tend to repeat, depending on which one worked well of the members of our early family. A person goes to whatever extreme necessary to get attention, energy in their family. Interrogator parents tend to create aloof children, when someone continually asks you questions only to find something wrong with your answers, you get vague and distant to try to say things that will get their attention but not reveal enough to give them something to criticize. Intimidators tend to create poor children, poor me children, or another intimidator. If someone is draining your energy by threatening you with physical, mental, or emotional violence, being aloof doesn't work. You can't give them you can't get them to give you energy by playing coy. You're forced to become more passive and, and guilt trip them about the harm they are doing. If this doesn't work, then as a child, you endure until you're big enough to explode against the violence and fight aggression with aggression. And aloof parents tend to create interrogator children. If you were a child when your family members were either not there or ignored you, playing aloof <laughs> would would not get their attention, you would have to resort to probing and prying and finally find something wrong with the aloof people in order to force attention and energy. To find your true self, you must go back to your family experience and review what happened. Once you become conscious of your control drama, we can focus on the higher truth of our family that lies beyond the energy conflict. Once we find this truth, it will tell us who we are, the path we are on, and what we're doing. Look past the energy competition that exists in your family and search for the real reason you are there. Ask yourself the question, why was I born in this particular family? What might have been the purpose for that? That's a good question. Ask yourself 
what each of your parents stood for. Each parent will try to claim your allegiance to the particular point of view. Every human being, whether they are conscious of it or not, illustrates with their lives how he or she thinks as human beings are supposed to live. Each of us must try to discover what our parents taught us about this, and at the same time, what about their lives could have been done better? What you would have changed about your parents is part of what you are working on. Every person begins their spiritual life in a position between their parents' truths. That's why you were born there, to take a higher perspective on what they stood for. Your path is about discovering a truth that is a higher synthesis of what these two people believe. And if you look closely at all the things that have happened to you since birth, if you view your life as one story, you'll be able to see how you've been working on this question all along. So, and then we can go into the sixth insight. Getting well, clear over... Just, yeah, a yeah. just a second. I want to, uh, want to elaborate on part of something here. Because we're talking about the parents and the kids. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I remember the first thing I tore apart, because I was one of those inquisitive kids. I just had to tear things apart and find out how they work. Here's Daddy's Philco radio. I said, let's see, what happens when you remove this tube? <laughs> well, nothing happened. I could still tune around, sounded good. I pulled another, man, I pulled half the tubes out that thing. And if it stopped working, I shoved the tube back in. I pulled another tube back out. Now I'm telling my age. <laughs> 52, blah, blah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> It's a perfect age. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> here comes my, you know, here here comes my mom, and she and she looks. She says, "What are you doing? You know, you shouldn't mess with that." He says, "But you don't know what you're doing." Blah 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 blah. Look, man, I learned. I did something. You know, after a while, they started bringing me things to fix. So I mean, it all prevailed. But the deal is, I mean, look, I, you know, if you, if you tear down your kid when he does something, you're damaging his spirit. Mm -hmm. and you're taking his energy. So, I mean, what's what's that to say? Are you a good mommy or are you a good daddy? Do you blow your top at your kids? Do you suck their energy out of them every time they do something? I've seen people chew on their kids when the kids wasn't doing nothing wrong. And she says, well, I you don't tell me how to raise my kids. My kids, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll keep my kids. I'll, I'll be strict with them. And I'll be blah, blah, blah. You know, look, basically, when you're being strict for no reason and they ain't doing nothing wrong, you're damaging people. It's, it, you know, but then, you know, I, I learned, look, my kid does something. My kid wrote all over the walls. And so my other one said, yeah, cool. And he started drawing pictures, too. It was all marker. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we're in a rental house. We just got there. You know, uh, we were there like uh, four days. And here we got all the hall, all the bedroom and mommy and daddy's bedroom while we were out there in the living room. We just thought they were playing. They were playing. Yep. You know, and they, you know, but you don't want, mama started going off. And I said, hold, hold, hold on. I said, let me talk to him. She said, you handle it. I said, okay. I said, come here, guys. Pull them both over to me and give them, a, give them both a big hug. I said, did you do this for mommy and daddy? And they just nodded their head. And I said, yeah. I said, you know what? I said, I expect better of you. You're, you're good kids. You're wonderful kids. You're blessed. You're smart. I said, but I think you could be a little bit smarter on this. Don't you think you shouldn't write on these walls? These aren't our walls. We got to get this stuff off the walls. And they looked at me and nodded. And I said, yeah, well, we got a lot of work to do, don't we? And we're going <laughs> to do it together, right? Yeah. I said, you don't do that no more. Because that meant, you see what it did to mommy? I says. You know, I got to get mad, too. I said, but you know what? I love you. I said, you come here, give me a hug, and show me that you're, you're daddy's boy. And you, too, come over here, you know. I said, all right, let's get this rag and get to going. You know what? They were laughing and giggling and stuff. They scrubbed the whole doggone hall, the bedroom, and, uh, and then we got off into our bedroom. The kids did not want to stop. The next day, they drew on the walls again, and were out there, already had the rag and the stuff. They thought it was their little chalkboard. Uh -huh. So I cured the problem. <laughs> I cured that problem, doggone. I asked the landlord, hey, man, can we, can we put up a 
on one wall in their bedroom, one of these dry erase marker things? They said, well, sure. Um, and then I said, can we paint? <laughs> so we took care of that, you know? And so we put up one of the dry erase marker boards in the room. And you know what? They never drew on any of the other walls. I mean, sure, they'd have marker all over their face and Indian war paint and stuff all over their uh, whole bodies. I, I have to tell them, look, this is not good for you. I, it's not, it's, it, it doesn't do your body very good. You can't be putting marker on you. Put it on the marker board only, okay? And evidence. We had a whole wall. They drew pictures, you know, happy pictures of mommy and daddy. And, you know, it, that makes a lot of difference. Their minds yeah, grew. Absolutely. By the time they were three and five years old, I had them doing multiplication, division, subtraction, and uh, Jeremiah was going into uh, square roots wow. with refrigerator magnets. Amazing. No joke. You let that mind build. You give that mind energy. You want your kids to grow up? Don't be so doggone strict on them, especially when they ain't doing anything wrong and it's just your ego problem. Absolutely. You don't need to jerk every bit of energy. Let that kid grow. Let that mind grow. And I'll tell you what, it uh, it's a wonderful thing. So anyway, okay, back on to the next inside. Yeah, when you were talking to it made me think boys like to play makeup too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we always have these gender roles and, you know, and it's, and it's so, you know, constricting, but we like to play. We're, we're like children, even when we're big, we're still like children. So, you know, it's really important to, to keep that attitude. And... That brings me to something. After five years of finding this and starting to live and live by it, after five years, I look 10 years younger. So I add the five years to that, and I basically, I think I made myself live longer by 20 years right off the bat by uh, just starting to put these things into practice and understand. You're not meant to be an energy source to, to drain off on negative. You're not meant to be in the negative. You were a being that was meant to praise. That's why we are musical. That's why we make music. We're the, you know what I mean? birds and all that yeah they sing and all that stuff they, they got their own tune and it sounds a lot like the some of the sounds that come out of the cog, uh, cosmos mm -hmm. if you ever compare the two it's an amazing thing i think they actually read the frequencies in, in the uh, cosmic energy mm -hmm. and what's going on in the earth the magnetics however you want to explain it but they are in touch with it and the birds are beautiful to listen to you wake up in the morning listen to them and just keep listening just stay quiet lay back just lay there and wake up slow, listen to the bird. And I'll tell you what, man, that is one heck of a start of your day. Even at a Indian powwow, I woke up. I used to go to a lot of the Indian powwows, uh, Upper Mattapanai, Pamunkeys, uh, um, Ojibwe. Um, but you wake up in the morning and they, they, they play the songs of clearing on the flutes. And it echoes into the trees and comes out. Uh, because it bounces off so many different trees, it sounds like it's a hundred miles away and right next to you all at the same time, not losing any volume. It fills and completely covers the air, and it's one of the most sweetest, most relaxing sounds I've ever heard in my life. Um, I'd I'd stay overnight at any powwow just to hear that in the morning, every morning. It is beautiful. It's it adds to the nature and the feel. Everybody wakes up everybody's in a not just a good mood i mean but a loving giving mood you walk around and everybody's just smiling at you and happy to see you and you can't stop smiling yourself it is a wonderful feeling and it's, it's one of the th I, it, we miss out on so much in life just by not slowing down we want to worry about bills we're, we're plugged into the digital and oh come on man you know get real get life life if you want life energy, change the way you think, change the way you do. I mean, old habits die hard, but when you start experiencing the energy, you get addicted. And you want it, you don't have to draw it off of somebody else. It's right there inside you. It's all around you. Go outside in the morning. Go outside in the evening. Touch the ground. Ground yourself out. Get rid of the extra ions and stuff in your body. Get you where you're supposed to be, in tune with the earth, and feel yourself. Just Feel the love. And if somebody's, you know, you know, like I said, somebody's having a bad day or if somebody does something wrong, it's not a time to steal their energy. 
Right. The solution basically is in the giving. You know, it's in the giving. I mean, uh, lots of different cultures heal by touch, by manipulating magnets. And, and it's, it's all the energy. It all comes from inside. It's, it's something you have command over. I mean, God said he gave you dominion over the the uh, animals of the air, on the land, and in the sea. He gave you dominion over all of it. It's yours. He put you in that position. Doggone it, use it. Mm-hmm. It's meant for you. And it's meant for you to see the splendor, to see the, the architecture, to see how it's put together, to realize, no, this ain't chance. It didn't just happen by chance. There is no way possible. Your top scientists will tell you the same thing. There is no way possible. You'd have to win the lottery every day for a year and uh, and get elected to be president of the United States mm-hmm. to, to equal the chance. It, it, there's no chance right. that it's that it, you know it didn't happen by accident. And there, that's another point. There is no such thing as coincidence. No such thing as coincidence. You'll find once once you start uh, changing the path or changing your energy field around you by the way that you feel, you learn to start enjoying it and stop getting in the negative and burning out. Your energy will grow and you'll start seeing it more. You'll start to see the ores. You'll start to see what's going on in people. You'll understand, well, don't want to be with that guy. <laughs> yep. Oh, hey, who's this guy? Go over and talk to him. If he caught your attention. It's meant for you to talk to him. He's got something for you. You got something for him. And I have never once found where I educated or taught somebody or or just basically uh, had a conversation with him about it. And I didn't get something back out of it. I learned. And if you go through a whole day without learning, that's a waste of time because you ain't got much of it. Um, And you darn don't, you know, you darn sure don't have enough time to sit there and keep Staying in the negative, burning it out, and hibernating to yourself. and No, go out there, forsake not the fellowship of thyself together. And that's a very true word. Um, get with people, speak with people, understand, try to help the world. That's one of the reasons, like I said, that's one of the reasons why I love Shaziz. He's so mm-hmm. full of love. Right. And it's natural. It's natural for him. Uh, very exceptional man. I've loved him for a long time. Well, there's a lot of us like that, that are just, you know, um, I came from a family that had a lot of uh, dysfunction, they call it, and uh, there was a lot of abuse and everything. And I guess as a result of of those relationships that I have with my parents, that kind of pushed me to be more loving, but I had to go through a lot more drama and trauma, (laughs) the drug addiction and all this other stuff before I got to the place where... I could even understand that what was inside of me and, and, you know, if it's my true purpose or whatever, that, that this is the way I'm really supposed to be. It has nothing to do with the way I used to live my life. That was all, you know, self-destructive behaviors and things like that. And I don't know so much about draining energy from other people, but I was like trying to kill off the energy in myself the way I lived because of all the things I had went through. So now I have a completely different view of life and um and I try to live my life in a different way and and I'm conscious enough of aware of it now that I can see the benefit that it has for other people and I don't consciously go out every day thinking well who can I help or you know how can I make this better but I I tend to do that as a result of trying to live a different kind of life and, I, and yeah, that I, is a good thing to do. You start off your morning, you're looking to say, well, who am I going to help today? Give me one of them electrons. Uh, you know, electrons got more more information than any computer. One electron's got more information on it than any computer hard drive out here. And there's one on the opposite side of the earth with the same information. Uh, you know, I kind of just sit there and say, look, God, man, send a good electron with me today. One I need, you know, and who who, who can I help? What am I going to do? I mean, I got a friend who just walked in the door here. He, he's he got this deal. He says he, he he tries to help one person every day. I mean, that's his deal. I mean, I've come, I've, you know, like I said, there's no coincidence, no such thing as coincidence. I've broken down on the side of the road, 
several times. And here comes this man passing us within five to ten minutes after we've stopped and sometimes within within the minute just coming by with the trailer and he stop over and say what's up you need a tow uh you, you you can't get past the timing you can't get past the timing like that the it it's not coincidence right. coincidence happens randomly it happens because you just intersected but i'm i'm saying that the intersections come when you need it, because of your thoughts, kind of like Granada Steve was saying, he needs that parking spot. I'm going to need a spot close to the building when I get there. I'm running late, blah, blah, blah. Next thing he gets there, sure enough, that one parking spot he was thinking about is wide open for him. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's no reason for that. There's no reason why it should be open. But it is. Um, you know, the energies uh, and, and, the, and the, the positive thoughts. When you're When you're sitting there trying to do good things. Good one for you. If you're trying to do bad things, well, you're just going to have to fight it to get it done. Right. And that's, that's about the way it is. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, like over 20 years ago, somebody said to me, when God wants to remain anonymous, he goes by coincidence. <laughs> and it, that always <laughs> stuck with me. It was always like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so we don't notice it, but that's, you know, an important part of life. And as we become more conscious of ourselves, then we can become more conscious of the synchronicities. And I think that's the whole key is that as we realize that those connections, then, then we can come together as the human family, you know, and, and we're less likely to, to keep up on these, uh, control dramas and trying to drain each other's energy. We can start to share it. And, um, I think it was you who said, give them your energy. Don't let them steal it. Just give it to them. <laughs> That's right. You give them the energy, and you'll always have it, and uh, it'll be multiplying, getting bigger, and everything. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just give them the energy. You, it, don't let them steal it. No. Steal it means they got it. They they took it from you, and uh, then you, it, you know, it's stupid. You just you don't have to have bad days. Um, like I said, I don't I don't take medicine for depression. Don't care for it. Don't like what it's doing to my body. Um, I just so you're a manic depression. That's right. What's what's the problem? Well, you need to cheer up. Oh, that means I need energy. Oh, I know how to generate energy. Cool. Let's straighten it out. Done. And you and you just go on with your day. Yeah. You know, if you need a break from everything, just get away. Go out. Get away from everybody. Go out. Sit under a tree. Relax a while. Think of good things till it all clears out of your head. I noticed uh, back in the taxi cab days, uh, somebody really do something really bad. I I realized that if I went on through my day. It would be a cascading thing over and over and over and over. And, you know, it's best to just say, okay, well, I'm not working by the hour. I don't have to, I don't have a schedule. I'd take that car home. I'd go, go to sleep, relax, get back up, come back out an hour later. Next thing you know, you got a trip to Richmond or you got one uh, going to Kentucky. Uh, and which was not really unusual for me. I'd go out of state two or three times a month. And some people had never been out of state at all. Or much out of uh, out of the town, very much. Um, things doors opened up, things worked for me. And I was, you know, I'd see somebody. Well, I'm. I said, where are you heading? He said, oh, I'm going to the airport. Oh, where are you heading from? Where, where's the plane going to? He said, I got to go up to D.C. My mom's in the hospital. I said, Well, how long's your layover? You got a layover? And I said, Yeah. Well, I got to. I don't know why the plane don't just go straight up there. I got to go all the way to. Uh, I got to go all the way to uh, this other airport, and then I got a three-hour layover and back over. Blah, blah. I said, well, we we can be there a little quicker. Mm-hmm. They said, did, did you buy your ticket online yet? They said, no, I have to go up there and pay for it, and it's going to cost me about 700 Well, shoot, give me five. We'll go up there, and we'll be there before then. Uh, you get to laugh and joke on the way, get something to eat, go to the bathroom if you want, and we'll go there. Next thing you know, we're on our way to D.C. Nice. Um, it worked out, you know. Uh I, I, that's sales. I take a little loss, but you know what? I made a lot more money than I did uh, than I would have in the regular day because the gas up there didn't cost me, you know, that much. Mm-hmm. So I had a good day. A few hundred dollars in my pocket? Shoot, yeah. And I had a ball. And so then the other guy. And then the guy will call you back to come pick him up. Sure, why not? Um, that's it. When you, when you start coming in tune with what's going on around you, you'll find things just work together for you. And it works together for the good. And Absolutely. it's pretty much not matter what you do. 
the manifestation just just happens. Um, you get the thought, you 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 intuitively know what you need, and then the next thing you know, you just you get you get exactly what you need, and it just happens. I got to take about a thirty second to a sixty second break. Go ahead, um, and I'll continue. Um, we're going to go into the sixth insight. And it's getting clear of our family control drama opens the way for us to attune to our particular mission in life. Um, you must look at the significant turns in your life, reinterpret them, try to perceive the sequence of interests, important friends, coincidences that have occurred. What are they leading to? Um, and spend time to process clearing the past. Once you transcend the family control dramas, um, you have a higher, you understand, comprehend your higher meaning of your life and why you were born to the particular family and what all the twists and turns of your life were preparing, preparing you for. Uh, we all have spiritual purpose, a mission that we have been pursuing without being fully aware of it. And, uh, and I guess I'm just going into the sixth insight here, um, trying to, uh, clarify that uh, without being fully aware of it, once we bring it completely into our consciousness, our lives can take off. The truth we pursue on a particular spiritual mission is as important as the evolution of the universe itself, for it enables evolution to continue. Humans are born into their historical situations to find something to stand for. They form a union with another human being who also has found some purpose. The children born to this union then reconcile these two positions by pursuing a higher synthesis gained by coincidence. Each time we fill up with energy and a coincidence occurs to lead us forward in our lives, we institute the level of energy in ourselves and so we can exist on a higher vibration. Our children take our level of vibration and raise it even higher. This is how we as humans continue evolution. Um, and that was a big thing. Yeah, go ahead back over there for an example uh you know things happen um uh, anyway well yesterday we took off one of my cars and we took it up there to uh fort worth and uh we sold it and got two hundred dollars and uh we kind of split the money our way and uh they said man we ain't got no business ain't got nothing going and we both need money i said well it'll happen it'll happen i kind of had you know just i just felt positive about it here today uh my friend jim comes over and that was the first break that we had. He had a man call, and he wants a shed moved, an 8x8 eight eight shed, and it's all wood. He needs it moved down about blocks. So we got to jack it up, get it up, put it on the trailer, take it down. And he said, well, the man's only paying $100. Well, that's 50 bucks a piece for a little little labor for the day, and it's under the table. So uh, after I uh, got off that last break that we were on, uh he came back uh, with the results. We got some cleanup to do too. That price went up to uh, two hundred and fifty dollars with all of that, and so that means one hundred and twenty-five a piece for tomorrow. Nice. So, like I said, it, you know, like I said, there's no coincidence. Maybe uh, Jim popping over here on here is meant for somebody to understand how it all comes together. Um, one other example: <clears throat> when I was in the taxi cab and the bills were getting kind of tight and things were uh, kind of going haywire. Uh, I'd experienced several months before where the bills were really tight, but this month I was looking well over a thousand dollars, more like fifteen hundred dollars in the hole. And I was saying, man, I don't know how I'm going to pay the insurance on these cabs and keep these guys working, because my idea of success was uh, several drivers being able to support their families because of me. That's my idea of success. I didn't. They made more than I did. I didn't really mind. We was uh, enjoyed. This one month we have getting a. I said, man, you know this insurance is due tomorrow, and I kind of looked up to God and I says, you know what? You've carried me through everything. I don't know what I'm worrying for. I said, I'm just going to put it in your hands. I'm going to sit back and laugh and enjoy and see how you come through with this because I, you know, there ain't no sense sitting there going, oh man, poor me, poor me. So it's all you. And I said, now thank you very much for it. Uh, amen. And the phone rang. Oh, my goodness. One of my guys was up at the mall, and he was heading down one of the lanes uh, in between the parking spaces, and somebody backed out into the side of my cab. 
Painted red, white, and blue, stars and stripe, prismatique, rainbow flake, and copper pearl. A nice $1,850 paint job. I think you see where this is going. Mm -hmm. and, uh, nobody was hurt. Uh, my driver lost his fare, and he was worried. He said, oh, man, I, I, I got your cab wrecked. Somebody hit your cab. I said, what are we doing? I said, well, bring it in, man. Bring it in. Come get another cab. And so he did. He was, he, he was kind of shocked, you know. I'm kind of... He couldn't believe that I sounded like I was in a really good mood. And because I was, because I knew exactly where it was going. And the insurance man says, well, it's a 80, uh, 87 Caprice Classic. That's worth about 350 But, you know, this is only on the door here. It says, uh, the door cost you about 27 bucks. He started to scribble out a check. I said, wait a minute, Bubba. I said, that's an $1,850 paint job on that car. I said, it don't come out of a can like that, and you can't match the angles and everything. You can't just paint a door. It looks like a Band-Aid, and a car that's painted like the flag. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, man. You can't run around with a Band-Aid on it. I'll have veterans shooting at me, you know, veterans of the foreign wars. I'll have them guys shooting at me. They say, no, no way. I said, they, they, they get mad when I don't wash the car and wax it. So, you know, I said, look, I, this, is, this has got to be repainted. I can't just paint one door. Oh, we can't. I said, well, he said, I ain't got to sign it. I said, well, I'll tell you what. This is $350 a day for every day that you don't sign that check because that's how many days I got to keep this car out of service. Oh, he got all, he got all fired up. Man, I could, I could, I could see the vein on his uh, nearest temple going, dum, 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 dum. And I was going, ooh, it's working. And he signed out the doggone check. And, uh, and then as a leave, they said, you know, you got a flat tire in the front? Sunday. <laughs> we anyway, uh, I we you know he, he parked at the farm fresh, so I went up there and brought the car up for him for him to look at it. And I said, you know what, I got a tire shop right around the corner over here. Just drive on the stupid thing. Let me give you a tire. There ain't no other tire shops open today. By the time that man left, I had him laughing and so happy. He said, you know, I should have put the extra twenty five dollars on that eighteen hundred and fifty dollar check. Um, I should have put the other twenty seven on there for your door. Or I should have put the tire on there. I said, no, 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 we're good, we're good. So I still had $250 left over uh, to play with. Um, so the, the day worked out right. Like I said, there's no coincidence. And it, it, the timing of it couldn't have been worse. I mean, and it couldn't have been any better. So <laughs> that's just another example. I've, I've, I've got so many of them. I've seen all the way from the last uh, 20, 25 years or so. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I could uh, fill up your broadcast with them, but uh, well, let's get back to your insights there. Okay, um, what I was saying um, was I was in the middle of the sixth insight, and it, there's like six parts to it. So um, what you want to do is you want to try to um, get clear of your family, um, have understand your spiritual purpose, your mission, um, the truth we pursue on a particular spiritual mission is as important as the evolution of the universe. Um, the current generation is ready to do this consciously and accelerate the process, no matter how scary. There is no longer any choice in this matter. Once you learn what life is about, there is no way to erase the knowledge. If you try to do something else with your life, you will always sense that you're missing something. And I want to stop here because... My life today, the last three or four months, I had a, I had a car accident, which was my fault. I was working a double. I came home. It was 1130 at night. I was at an intersection. Um, I went through a red light and as a result, a woman hit me on the driver's side and I banged my head somewhere. I don't know where, but got some, a brain injury. I guess you would call it as a result. In the last almost four months, um, I was in a, a PhD program. I was taking two courses, which I was doing successfully. I worked as a supervisor, uh, a 250 uh, combined client and employee uh, facility that I supervised. Um, and I was working three days a week. I was working 16 hours and two 12-hour shifts. and um, I was coming home, got hit, um, went to the hospital. Everything in my brain was fine. I had two CAT scans, an MRI, 
and a EEG and everything was fine, but I still wasn't able to do paperwork. Um, I thought I was going to get short term disability. Um, I did get approved for two days because my doctor said that my physical symptoms had subsided. So the, the insurance company decided since I didn't have any physical symptoms and all the other tests were negative or positive, however you want to look at it, that they're, they didn't have to cover me for anything. So I've been out of work all this time. I used up all my vacation and personal time. Um, I couldn't pay for my apartment. I'm losing school because I can't do my schoolwork, which was a piece of cake before this. And, um, and I had to make a decision within a half an hour what I was going to do. And actually, three weeks before that, that all came to a head, I had this little insight a little small voice said to me you're going to have to leave here and um and I didn't hear it that way I heard it like well what if you have to leave here and I was like well no I don't have to leave I ha- I'm established in the community um I have this nice apartment I have a good job I make you know not a, not a living wage but I make enough money to survive hand to mouth um I'm in school um this is going to get better everything's going to be fine so I put it out of my mind. I'm, you know, I had decided that it was going to be what I wanted it to be. The next two weeks were like the dark night of the soul. I went through this horrendous period where I was despondent because I didn't know what was happening. I was waiting for the insurance company to make their decision. I didn't know what, how it was going to happen, what's going to happen with school, um, you know, and, and trying to do everything that I had to do for myself was so difficult. That it had just come to a head and I, and I just went through that horrible dark period, which was good because when I finally had come to the, to the moment of truth, I had 20 minutes to make decisions. I got a phone call. I called my mom first because my mom had really been bankrolling me to even stay in my apartment this past month. So I had to let her know something had to be done. Within 20 minutes of all this stuff happened and my sister called me and said, the apartment over the garage is open. You're welcome to come and stay here. I was like, my mother invited me to stay with her, but because of family drama, <laughs> there's no way I could, I could see that. I just, I, it would be like, just forget it. I don't want to go there, but, um, this is a one bedroom apartment. It, you know, it's, it's possible. There's also a lot of jobs up here. Um, I can do physical labor. I just can't do the, the paperwork stuff. And it's too far away from my current job. So I had to make a decision whether to fight for all these other things or start a new life. And it's really ironic that, you know, wanting to be one of those people who just jump off and let the universe, you know, grab you and take you and just trust that everything is going to happen the way it's supposed to happen it's like i'm kind of still in that old paradigm of of the fear and and is this really going to work and and it's not working and it doesn't feel right and all this other stuff but also at the same time i'm trying to embrace the love of the universe and the love that i'm getting from going through this whole experience a lot of people don't understand it i've lost some people um, you know, have strained relationships because they don't understand me walking away from the drama of my job and all this other stuff. And, you know, and I'm also kind of nervous because of income, you know, like, but I know that everything's good. I'm in a better situation than I was a week ago. So, and last night I did, I, I drove 250 miles to get the rest of my stuff back and forth. And, Clean the apartment, gave up the keys, you know, made the phone calls to shut off all the services. And, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here at my sister's apartment and I'm in paradise. I'm in the mountains. I'm in the beautiful mountains of Pennsylvania, the Allegheny Mountains. And, and it, if I could pick anywhere I wanted to live, you know, uh, right now, and I don't want to cry, but to be here going through this experience, it just, you know, it's really overwhelming to to think that all this devastation of what I thought was my life and I worked so hard for the last seven years to try to build that independence and it was going to be this way has all fallen away 
and I've been given this beautiful opportunity. And here we are. Last week I spoke to Freeman, which I thought was synchronistic. And he also believes in the Celestine prophecy. His life is a total rendition of what you're saying. Everything they talked about on their um, friendship agenda. They got a bus, a school bus, which was paid for by donations. And they traveled. They said a sacred spiral around the United States and and met all these amazing people and learned all this amazing stuff. And now here we are talking about the Celestine prophecies. And I just think it's just reaffirming for me the, the, the wonderful synchronicities of life and how I'm really supposed to be living my life. You know, how I can let go of this old trauma, drama, whatever that I have stuck in my head and embrace the love of the universe and just move forward into this really new paradigm that I really want my life and the whole world to be. So I, yeah, I just think it's amazing. Freeman. When you said uh, Freeman, you were talking about Freeman Jack, right? No, I actually was talking about Freeman Fly. That's, um, he's more like an esoteric um, hidden agenda uh, researcher, and he's uh, it's done a lot of amazing work. He even predicted 9-11 uh, and a few other things. He uh, talked about the presidential uh, situation, how... He knew how Obama was going to be uh, not legitimate. Um, the devastation that they did to Clinton, outing him for his sexual promiscuity, you know, like all these other things. That, and he said it's it's a formula. And I just watched David Wilcox last night. Um, he's also on Guy on TV, and he was talking about energy. And I and I can't wait to really get this clear in my head. But that. There isn't necessarily protons and electrons, but it's gravity that feeds the energy. And I'm not saying it right. I have to learn more about it, but it's amazing. I think it's more in the water. I think it's more in the water. Our bodies are made of 90% water. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everything that I've, I've been learning since 2010, 11, about health, about distilled liquids, I mean, when you talk about raw foods, that's distilled liquids. It's all the same processes. But I think your mindset, how you think about things, how you perceive things, uh, you know, also feeds into all this. So it's just an amazing well, you know, time you, for me. You, you wrestle not against flesh and blood. Absolutely. But the principalities and the beasts of the air, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. You're, you, uh, there's more going on around you. Matter of fact, there's... Just in the one room you're in, there's more things going on around you than uh, than your mind can comprehend. Um, it's it's not it's not just uh, it's it's just not uh, a set of facts that we see in our reality. Uh, matter of fact, your reality is different than my reality. Um, somebody says, you know, well, let's get back to reality. Well, whose reality are we going to get back to? Number one. Uh, a ship went down in the ocean, and they were out there for they were out there for uh, well over a week uh, before uh, they made it to shore or got found. And uh, they didn't have water; they didn't bring water with them, uh, or very little water. And that water was gone after a few days. Man, uh, your body doesn't live without fresh water, and you can't drink the seawater. And they were all sitting in the boat thinking about that nice, cool, clear water of the of the stream. Or of a river, and they were all thinking about it. And the, the captain, after a few days, he just kept looking at the water, and he noticed that the color of the water had changed from a green to a blue, or from a blue to a green. I don't remember which. Mm -hmm. But he looked down, and he, he said, "Man, that looks like fresh water." And he dipped his hand in there and took a sip, and it was fresh water. And they all drank, and they all survived for several more days, and they were not dehydrated or anything. And uh, when they were found, they gave the account, and they kind of swept it under the rug a little bit. But uh, that story has come back out. Uh, yeah, I heard that story. I heard that a couple of years ago. Yep. And then, uh, then they had uh, that, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, biological uh, weapons conference uh, in one of the uh, nations there. And all up in the building, these people came from all over on the plane. And the only thing they had to drink was the water that was in the pitcher on the table, but they all went to the hospital with 
poisoning from regular tap water, water. is what, the, what it was basically set out as. So, yeah, uh, the water, I mean, and it's, and it's all throughout the universe. The sun will have a solar flare. Down here on Earth, we're looking into a microscope, and all of a sudden the bacteria and whatever life we're looking at is just going nuts under the microscope. 8.23 seconds later, when the light actually arrives here, we see that we had a solar flare. Mm-hmm. How did those little uh, single cells or uh, the almost no-brainers know? The energy. That's it. And it's all uh, it's, it's all transferred through the water. I mean, water is, uh, uh, is connected throughout the universe. And like I said, we're 90% water. So I don't think it's... Uh, so what you're thinking, what's what's going on in your brain and your mind and your spirit is actually happening somewhere else. You are affecting other people. Right. And I hope by this show we're affecting even more than that. I think we are. I really do. And um, I think when I was a child, like two things really stood out with me from going to church and everything was that um, I am my brother's keeper. I mean, I always like held that in the back of my head and, you know, and just love people like you want to be loved. And a lot of people get that confused and try to figure out, like, how does, what does that mean? Well, how do I want to be treated as a person? And that's how I have to treat other people. And maybe even better than I would treat myself because how I feel about myself is how I reflect to other people. So if I love myself, if I care about myself, I'm able to, to share and give that to other people. But I think it's funny that all these years it's always been, I am my brother's keeper, I am my brother's keeper, and I don't know why, that just stuck with me. And it is, it's so true. What we do, how we think, mostly how we think, impacts this whole construct, the whole universe. And we have to really be like the four agreements, like, um, and I forget Miguel, what his name is, but... um impeccable with your thoughts you have to really be impeccable with our thoughts so th- this just ties into so many things that i've read and so many things that i've viewed and other people have discussed and i think we need to talk more about this because i think this is the message like shiz is is trying to put out there this message of love that this is within all of us we innately know it but maybe it's just not brought to our consciousness and then once it is we can't unlearn it and um and it's just amazing um we got to the sixth insight we have about five minutes left um would you like to muddy um maybe just discuss um some of your website or you know your youtubes or anything like that and just let people know what your real agenda is and what you really do out in the real world <laughs> besides well, spread basically, love <laughs> uh years years ago uh, i got interested uh and uh, free energy. And as I read, I started finding out uh, the how people uh, that basically get into green energy and start these companies just really rake these people over the coals. Um, you're talking about uh, a wind turbine rated for 1,500 watts, but it's a five-foot prop. And by the calculations, you figure out that's a 36-mile-an-hour wind. Well, when the wind, when wind goes down to half, well, every time you double the, the speed of the wind, your power factor goes up by a factor of eight times. So let, let's take it from 36, let's take it down to 18 miles per hour. So you, and, and let's give them a little extra leeway at 1600 watts, okay? Just, just, just to give them a little more leeway. All right, 1600 watts, uh, one eighth of that, oh, 200 watts. 200 watts in an 18 mile an hour wind. Well, let's get down to our normal winds that you see every day, not the ones that you see about every five five or six times a year. Uh, we'll go down to uh, nine miles an hour. Well, now you're doing 25 watts. So you spent, you spent big money to get you a, 36, uh, uh, to get you a, a 1.5 kilowatt wind turbine, but you're, most of the time you're only getting 25 watts. Well, that's not right. And I hate the way industry does that to people. And basically, usually the alternator, I mean, that that's the power in the blades. Usually the alternator isn't that efficient. Uh, usually 45%. So maybe you're getting about uh, 7 or 8 watts. 
you're really not even getting a full amp until the wind picks up to about 15 or so, and then you're going to see three and four amps. Oh, yeah, it's a good wind turbine. Man, the other day it was really kicking. I saw 12 amps out. Big deal. <laughs> it, that gust of wind was there, and then it was gone. It's not like you're getting that every day. But when they show their uh, projections, they're sitting there saying, yeah, 1.5 kilowatts, 24 hours a day, blah, blah, blah. You'll save this much money at the end of the year, and they lie. And I am out here to expose it. Yeah, they're And also... I'm out here to show people how to take it, you know, take things apart, get what you need, get it from scratch, or buy the magnets and the wire and build it from scratch themselves. A great site is otherpower.com, where I got 90% of my info from. I studied, I saved the doggone web pages. I read it several times until I had it memorized because I had a mission. I was going to educate the world. And my, my, my site, I don't really have a site. I just got a YouTube channel. Uh, got, uh, well over 200 videos. Most of them up around 10 to 15 minutes long. Showing people how to do it from scratch. And that's what I want. And it's, uh, uh, you go to www, uh, http www.youtube.com slash user slash muddy muddy mudman. And sorry, I ain't got it to post and paste on here, especially I got in the short it. Time. What was the other one? I'm going to put muddy muddy up there. The other one is otherpower.com. Yeah, I Definitely got that one. There. I already have that. Read the, uh, read the, uh, read, read the pages on, uh, wind turbine evolution or home brewed wind time evolution. Uh, Wind power evolution. Uh, very informative. Many different wind turbines, and they go through, show you step by step with pictures, and at the end, they show you the outputs of each of them. And uh, there's more pages on there showing you how to calculate the power in the wind and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, you know, I didn't come here to promote all that. My main deal is just to get to get information out to people and help them the best I can. Go out there, help somebody, give somebody a hug, and if they catch your attention, and you just and and you look back, and they and maybe they're looking at you, and you just seem like you're drawn to them. It's not a coincidence. Go over and meet them, give them a hug, help them out, give them five bucks, whatever. You're gonna find out in uh, the days later on why that happened. So I'm gonna hand it over to you to the end of the show, and uh, many good things to you and yours. God bless you. Um. Well, Don't let anybody so steal your energy. Just give it to them. God awesome. bless. Thank you, Muddy. Um, that was uh, the Muddy Muddy Mud Man from Green Wind and Other Home Energies uh, YouTube channel, and also posted the Other Power website on the chat. Um, I can't post his website; it's just not coming up. It's like invisible. Maybe a different color. I don't know what. I was going to say Brian O'Leary, the um, the astronaut. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. He also uh, was a strong proponent for alternative energy. And one of the that was the first time I had ever learned that um, solar and wind power just aren't that efficient. And um, the the cost um, to install solar panels or wind. You know, to, to get all this, uh, paraphernalia put on your house, put on your property, set up and everything. Um, you'll never get back what you put into it. Um, even if you do happen to get, um, you know, different spikes of energy. Good. Right. The solar has gone way down. You need to recheck. You can get about, you can get some, uh, solar panels for 58 cents a watt now. Awesome. Yeah. You got to double check and go back into them. Uh, go after that but i'll go ahead and get on out of here and keep okay. smiling have a ball thank you thank you for that update thank you but um anything other than oil or gas or uh now they have these uh they're um. making energy from corn um and i understand the process to to make those uh alternative fuels is is just as costly and and possibly damaging to the environment as whatever but um i think i think what it is most important is that it is all about energy and um and i want to thank everybody for listening today and uh thanks steve for hosting granada steve and uh thank uh the muddy muddy mud man for 
sharing with us his insights and wonderful explanations of the insights in the Celestine Prophecy. We only got to the sixth, but you can check them out. You can go online and just punch in Celestine Prophecy Insights or just the Celestine Prophecy and you'll come up with uh And I've also shared a link with the book. It's about 158 pages. It's actually written in a, a fiction format, like a mystery. A um, lot of intrigue. Very interesting story. And it, and it goes through the, the narrator learns about the insights through each individual that he meets and as um as muddy had uh stated that he um he said if somebody looks at you and you make eye contact how important that is to uh to um what do you call it um but um anyway I just thank you everybody for listening this is chrissy mcmahon for- this is to bring brilliant minds from every nation together and solve the world's problems one positive pebble at a time it will be the we the people of the world that bring about the true change peace and love to all government solved no problems if the intent was to do so it would already be done wars starvation sickness oppression Financial slavery, death, and destruction is what governments do best. With all the military might of every nation, governments use their power to destroy nations. The question is, why not use that might to bring to the hungry food, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, and so on? True representation of truth, freedom, and justice comes from we the people, and has never came from slick-talking politicians that will say whatever they have to to get elected and then regulate away our freedom. There is no reason for a starving baby to exist in our world of today. But yet it goes on. There is no reason for wars and sickness, yet it continues. We must stop feeding the beast that is eating humanity alive. We, the people of all nations, have the power to bring about a literal heaven on earth. You, as an individual, have more power than you can possibly imagine. You have the power of the spoken word. You have the power of the pen. You have the power of your actions, and most of you have the power of love. It is time to use this power to make our world a better place. We are the founding fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and cousins of our children and our children's children of the future. Into the future and beyond what we do today will define the world that they live in tomorrow. Let us from every nation come together and make that future a great one. From Shaziz, peace and love to all.